Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at what is the reduced mass. Well, it turns out that if we keep things simple and we assume that the large mass of the star or the sun is much, much greater than the small mass of the planet, then we really don't care about the barycenter. We just assume that the small object simply revolves around the large object and it revolves around the center of mass of the large object. And that is a pretty good approximation in many cases. Like for example with the Earth and the Sun, it turns out that the barycenter is very, very close to the center of mass of the Sun and you can barely see any sort of motion on the Sun due to the presence of the Earth. But in many systems, the planet is sufficiently large or the Moon is sufficiently large compared to the planet or the planet compared to the star that we do see some motion in the star or we see some motion in the planet due to the, the planet or the Moon. And so therefore we need to take that into account and then to find the correct motion and the correct relative motion of the two, we need to have what we call the reduced mass. So we'll show you at least how that reduced mass is calculated and then we'll try to understand what the, the key is to understanding the concept of the reduced mass. So first of all, we go back to our two vectors. We have the R2 vector which points to the small mass and the R1 vector which points to the large mass relative to the barycenter. And then we have a vector that goes from the large mass to the small mass which is called S which is R2 minus R1. So we can, we can solve the, that equation for R2 or R1 and we have that relative uh, relationship between the three vectors and we're going to need it because we're going to plug that into this equation right here. Now notice when you look at this equation you can see that the size of R1 and R2 are proportional to the ratio of M1 and M2. For example, if M2 is twice M1 then R1 will be twice R2. So it's kind of in reverse. If M2 is 10 times M1 then R1 will be 10 times R2. So that's how you can find the relative size of the two vectors R1 and R2. So now let's go ahead and let's start out by replacing R2 by S plus R1 and see what happens. Okay, when we do that we get the following. We get M1 R1 is equal to minus M2 times, instead of R2 we'll write S vector plus R1 vector. All right. I think what we want to do is isolate S, so we're going to bring the R1 vector over. So minus M2 times R1, that's negative, bring it across here becomes positive. So we end up with M1 R1 plus M2 R2 is equal to minus M2 times the S vector. So, oh no, well, this is R1, sorry. R1. Okay, so now we can factor out an R1. So we end up with M1 plus M2 times R1 is equal to minus M2S. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down here. So now we have R1 is equal to minus M2 divided by M1 plus M2 the whole thing multiplied times the S factor. And then we're going to find the reduced mass by doing this little mathematical trick. We're going to, and let me use a different color, we're going to multiply this times M1 and divide by M1. And so now what we end up with is we end up with R1 is equal to the negative of this quantity right here, let's slide as M1 times M2, so it's the product of the two masses divided by the sum of the two masses and then times the S vector divided by M1. And it's this quantity right here where we have M1, M2 divided by M1 plus M2. This, that's equal to, we use the letter mu, and this is called the reduced mass. So now again remember that in the simplistic case M1 is much much larger than M2. So what would happen to this quantity right here if M1 was much much larger than M2? Well in the denominator we have M1 plus M2 so essentially M2 would simply disappear and we end up with M1 times M2 divided by M1 the M1s would cancel and you simply end up with M2. So M2 then represents the mass of the small object. So in the case 
that we have M1 being very large and M2 relatively very small, then we end up with R1 is equal to M2 over M1 times S. But if the relative size is not quite that different, if M if M1 is not necessarily much, much larger than M2, it's relatively smaller, and it's still large, but not qu quite as large as before, so it's not an ideal case, then instead of having simply M2 over here, we have M2 times M1 divided by M1 plus M2, and that's called the reduced mass, and we need to use this as the mass of M2 in order to get a better perspective of the relative orbit, and we'll show you some examples of how that's done. Now, what if we do, we start with this equation, but instead of getting rid of M, uh, R2 using a substitution, we're going to substitute for R1 and see what happens then. So here we're going to replace R1 by R2 minus S. And of course, that should be an S vector. There we go. So this is equal to R2 minus the S vector equals minus M2 times R2. So now we want to separate, uh, we want to combine all the R2s on one side, bring the S on the other side. So here we have M1, R2, bring this across, that would be plus M2 times R2 is equal to, bring this across, that from negative goes to positive, times M1. So positive M1 times the S vector. And of course we separate uh, we, we factor out an R2, so we end up with M1 plus M2 times R2 is equal to M1S. And then we divide both sides by M1 plus M2, so we end up with R2 is equal to M1 divided by M1 plus M2 times the S vector. And now we're going to play that same mathematical trick. Now we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by M2, like this. And then again, we have the same quantity that we had before, which is essentially what we call the reduced mass. So now we can write that R2 is equal to the reduced mass times the S vector divided by M2. And here we had R1 is equal to the reduced mass uh, times the S vector divided by uh, M1, and we had a negative in this case, so this is R, uh, whoop, whoop, R1, because that's R2 right here, so we have R1. So there we, there we have now two equations that represents the R1 vector and the R2 vector in terms of the S vector and the reduced mass. So here you can see that the distance from the bare center to M2 is equal to the reduced mass times the S vector over M2, and the distance from the bare center to the small mass, ooh, I think I got that reversed, ah, too bad. So here we got R2, which represents the distance to the small mass. So the distance to the small mass and the vector to the small mass is equal to the reduced mass times the S vector. Remember, the S vector is simply the vector from the large mass to the small mass divided by M2, and here R1, which is the distance to the large mass, is equal to minus the reduced mass times the S vector divided by M1. Two very useful equations, but again, in both cases, to find the correct value for R1 and R2, because we don't have this condition, we have to include the reduced mass in order to find the correct values of the magnitude of R1 and R2, and that is how it's done. And that is why we need to reduce mass in order to calculate those.